Welcome to Introduction to C Programming. Today we are going to continue our discussion of repetition statements, specifically talking about the do while loop. So as we learned before when we talked about while loops, uh, repetition statements in general allow us to specify that an action is to be repeated as long as some condition remains true. Do while is another type of a loop that um, uh, will continue to, to repeat as long as a condition is true. Let's look at the example that I have here on the slides. Line 1, I create an int variable named product and it has a value of 2000. Then I have the keyword do. I open the curly brace. Immediately after that you see the close curly brace on line 5 followed by the keyword while. Open the parenthesis. That's where your condition goes. Close the parenthesis and then follow it by a semicolon. That is the syntax for a do while loop. Inside of the body of the do, which is uh, between the open and the closed curly brace, this is going to be uh, what you want to have happen as long as a condition is true. The way that the do while works is that it is going to execute the body of the do while statement uh, before it even checks the condition. It's going to execute it one time. So regardless of what the value of product is, it is going to execute the body of the do at least once. After it executes the body the first time, it's going to check the condition on line 5 inside of the while statement. And if the value of product is greater than 0, it will loop back up and execute lines 3 and 4 again. As long as the value of product is greater than zero, it will continue executing lines three and four once the value becomes uh, zero or less than zero. Then it will uh, break out of the do while loop and execute uh, the statement on line six. So let's take a look at this code and see what the output will be. So we start off with the value of product being 2000. And then on line 3, we say product equals product divided by 2. Well, it was 2,000. It's going to get divided by 2, which makes it 1,000. And then on line 4, we print out a 1,000. Okay, we loop back up because on line 5, we say is 1,000 greater than 0? It is, so we loop back up. And on line uh, 3, we make product uh, equal product divided by 2, which will make it 500, and then we print that value out. We check on line 5, is 500 greater than 0? It is. We loop back up. We divide product by 2, makes it 250, and print that. Loop back. We check to see if 250 is greater than 0. Loop back up to line 3. Divide it by 2, which makes it 125, and print that. 125 is greater than 0, loop back to line 3, we make it 125 divided by 2, which is going to be 67.5, since we're dealing with integers, it's going to chop the decimal place off, and we're going to get a 67. Uh, 67 is still greater than 0, we divide 67 by 2 on line 3, that's going to give us 33 and a half, we drop the decimal, we print out 33. 33 is greater than 0. We divide it by 2. It gives us 16 and a half, so we print 16. 16 is still greater than 0. Divided by 2, we get 8. 8 is greater than 0. Divided by 2, we'll print out a 4. 4 is greater than 0. Divided by 2 gives us a 2. That gets printed. 2 is greater than 0. We divide 2 by 2. We get a 1. We print that out. And then we do uh, pro 1 is greater than 0. We come up, we do a product equals 1 divided by 2. That gives us a 0 with a remainder of uh, 1 half. So it's going to give us a 0.5, a 0 0.5. But since this is an integer, we chop the decimal off. So it gives us a 0. We print 0. And then we say, is 0 greater than 0? The answer is no. So we break out of our do while loop. And on line 6, we print out the value of product. Well, at this point, the value of product is 0. So we print out 0, 1 last time. So that is what we're going to print out from this do while loop. The next slide has this written out for you so you can see all of the numbers that are printed from that do while loop. So our question, what is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop? Uh, very simply, the only difference is that the body of the do while loop is going to execute at least one time, 
whereas we have no guarantee that the body of a while loop is ever going to execute. The condition of a while loop gets checked before the first execution of the body of the loop, whereas the body of a do while loop is going to execute one time before it checks the condition to see if it's going to execute the body uh, a second time. So the difference is that the do while loop is guaranteed to execute the body at least once, whereas the while loop checks the condition, and only if the condition is true will it execute the body of the loop the first time. So that's the difference between uh, a while loop and a do while loop. Having said that, uh, do while loops are not used as commonly as while loops are. So there is an easy way that we can always make a while loop perform exactly the same as a do while. So let me pull up uh, some code that I have here and show you how we can do this. So let's say that we have some integer value num and we read in the value of num from uh, the user. And we're going to be doing something based on the value of num. Don't worry about what's actually inside right here. Uh, and you see that we're looping as long as num is greater than zero. Well, a way that we can write a while loop to behave exactly the same way as this is we just have to make sure that we are going to get inside of the while loop at least one time. Well, the way that we can do that is with some code that looks like this. So we create one additional variable and we assign it a value. Inside the condition of our while loop, we're going to say while the name of that variable is equal to that value or whatever our other condition was. Num is greater than zero. Now, inside of the while loop, I'm just going to change the value of that variable. If I change the value of that variable of something different, when I come back up, while this condition here is always going to be false. And we know that false or anything always gives us whatever that other condition is. So this first part is always going to be false after we've gotten in the first time. And then we're only going to be looking at the second condition. However, before we get in, that condition is going to be true. And we know that true or anything is always true. So that means that we're always going to get into our while loop at least one time. So this is a real easy fix for how we can make sure that how we can always write a do while loop as a corresponding while loop. We cannot always write a while loop as a corresponding do loop unless we throw in an if statement because a do while loop is going to execute the body at least one time, whereas with a while loop, we may not execute the body at least once. If we are definitely going to execute the body at least one time, then we would be able to write a while loop as a corresponding do while. However, the rule of thumb, you can write a do while loop as a while loop. You might not be able to write a while loop as a do while loop. Okay. Okay, the increment operator. Oftentimes in loops, we want to increment the value of a variable. Uh, we see code like this sometimes where we have our while loop and inside of our while loop, we are just going to be adding one to the value of num. In this case, it's num equals num plus one. Well, another way that we can write that, we have a, a shortcut using the plus equal operator. So num plus equal one, this is exactly the same as saying num equals num plus one. It's just a shortcut, another way of doing that. We have this kind of an operator, the plus equal operator. We have the same operator for uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. That is just going to be minus equal, star equal, slash equal, and percent equal. And it works the same way. You can use whatever number right here that you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be a 1. A 1 is just going to increment it by 1. But we can use whatever other value that we want there uh, instead of 1. And that is what it's going to add. In addition, we have one other shortcut, even shorter than that. I know that that dropped down the number of characters significantly, but we have another shortcut which is used very, very frequently, and that is the uh, post-increment or pre-increment operator. And this is where we put the name of the variable followed by a plus plus, or we do a plus plus followed by the name of the variable. This is going to add one, uh, one to that value. So this is equivalent to saying num equals num plus one. The plus plus only works if you are adding one. If you need to add a value other than one, you're not going to be able to use the plus plus operator. You're going to have to use the plus equal or just write the whole thing out like we have right here uh, with the variable name on both the left and the right side of the equal sign. Uh, we only have a decrement operator also. So there is also a minus minus operator. 
and that can be a pre-decrement or a post-decrement operator as well. We do not have the same uh, operator for the multiplication, division, or the modulus. And if you think about it, since it's only using the value one, it kind of makes sense that if you're gonna multiply a variable by one, you get the variable. If you divide it by one, you also get the variable. And if you take the modulus uh, after you divide it by one, you are always going to get zero. So it makes no sense for us to have uh, those operators with the, um, uh, the the two signs like we have here for the pre-increment, post-increment, the pre-decrement, and the post-decrement. So it only works with the plus signs and the minus signs. All it does is it does the exact same thing. So this line right here where I say num plus plus is exactly the same as saying num equals num plus one. There's no difference whatsoever with that. Uh, one point to make on this, the difference between the pre-increment and the post-increment. There is a slight difference between the two of them. With the pre-increment operator, it is going to execute before the rest of the line executes. Uh, the post-increment operator is going to execute F after the rest of the line executes. Uh, neither of these operators matters if it is the only operator on the line. So let's take a look at this right here where I say num plus plus semicolon, there's nothing else on the line, it is going to behave exactly the same as saying plus plus num. Those are exactly the same. However, on the next slide, I show you what the difference actually is between the post increment and the pre increment. So you see, lines one through five are exactly the same as lines seven through 11. The only difference is the condition on line five and the condition on line seven. On line five, I use the post increment operator. So I have counter plus plus. On line 11, I have the pre-increment operator, which is the plus plus counter. So let's walk through the code that we have uh, at the top there, the first um, five lines of code. I set the value of counter equal to zero, and then I say print out the value of counter. All right, so on line four, uh, inside of my do while, I print out the value of counter. Well, it starts off at zero, so I print that out. Line five, it's a post increment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna execute the rest of the line first and then I'm going to increment the value of counter. So I say while counter is less than 10, zero is less than 10 at this point, it is true. So then I increment counter to be a one and then I loop back up, print out one. I come down, I say is two less than 10, it is. I then increment the value of counter to be three. Uh, oh, sorry, we printed a one. So I say while well, one is less than 10, I increment the value of counter to be a two, and I come back up and I print out a two. And then I say while well, two is less than 10, it is, I increment counter's value to be uh, three, and I print out a three. And this is gonna keep going, we're checking up to 10, so I'm gonna skip a few steps here. Let's get up to where the value of counter is eight. We have just printed out an eight. So you say while eight is less than 10, it is, we increment eight to be a nine, we print out nine. Then I say, while well, nine is less than 10, it is, I increment it to 10, I print out 10. Then I say, while the value of counter is less than 10. So while 10 is less than 10, uh, it is not, I still increment the value of counter. So by line six, the value of counter is going to be 11. So I'm just gonna put a little note here. So the end value is going to equal 11 by the time that I get to line six. Now let's look at our second loop. So line eight, I have the value of counter equal to zero. I go into my do loop and I print out uh, zero. And then I say while plus plus counter is less than 10. Well, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna increment the value of counter first before we compare it to the value 10. So now I'm gonna increment it to make it a one and say while one is less than 10, it is, I loop back up and I print out a one. And then I increment it to a two. I say while two is less than 10, it is, I print out a two. And I keep going, I'm gonna skip a few steps here just like I did on the previous example. Let's get up to an eight. And I say while uh, plus plus on eight, so that's gonna be a nine. While nine is less than 10, that's true. I loop back in, I'm gonna print out a nine. Then I say while plus plus on nine, that makes it a 10. While 10 is less than 10, that is not true. I break out of my do while loop. So the value now at line 12 is going to be 10. So you see the difference is that in the first loop I actually printed out the values from 0 through 10 and then the next value that I have at line 6 would be 11. On the loop from line 7 through 11 uh, it only printed out the values from 0 through 9 and the value of that variable counter by the time that I got to the end 
uh, or outside of the loop is the value 10. The next slide, I actually show you that uh, so that you can see exactly what the output is on that. So that hopefully gives you a good understanding of the do while loop, how it compares to the while loop. And uh, I will talk with you all in just a second. We're going to go over our next repetition statement in our next lecture, which is on for loops.